I'm here to show you how to use the x right Color Checker video, which is a target of scientifically color balanced chips for use in production and post-production. On the back, we have the white balance target. It's spectrally neutral, which means that it reflects all frequencies of any light that hits it. This makes it ideal for any lighting situation you might encounter. Back on the front, we have the grayscale. At the very bottom, we have glossy black, which represents values from 0 to 10% on the IRE scale. Above that is dark gray for values from 20 to 30%. Above that is light gray for values from 40 to 50%. And at the top is white for values from 90 to 100%. Adjacent to that is a column of squares that gives you a grayscale ramp through the middle section of the tonal scale with values from 20 to 90% IRE. On the outside edge are the skin tone chips. These are scientifically color balanced from light to dark with some minor undertone variations. On the other edge, we have saturated and desaturated chromatic color chips for use in conjunction with the vector scope in your editing or color grading software. We'll get to these more when we get into post-production. Additionally, there's a color checker passport video, which gives you all the same scientifically color balanced chips, plus a focus chart, all in a handy hard shell case that fits right in your pocket or camera bag, so you never have a good excuse to not have one with you. Inside of Final Cut Pro 10, the first thing you want to do is make sure your whites are actually white. First, we need to find a frame that has a white balance side of the target. To isolate the white balance target itself, open the effects browser and drag the draw mask effect to your clip. Then make sure your clip is still selected in the timeline and draw a mask around the target in the viewer so that only the white part is showing. This allows us to use the RGB parade and very quickly and easily verify that white is white and make any adjustments necessary. In the color inspector, adjusting the temperature and tint sliders under the color wheels will affect all three color channels in the RGB parade. All you have to do is make these usually minor adjustments until the red, green, and blue channels are all in line with each other. You can place this guideline wherever you need to help eyeball the adjustments. Once those adjustments have been made, we can be sure that the white shown on the white balance side of the target is actually white. The next step is to turn off the mask and find a frame with the front of the target. Be sure to find a frame where the glossy black is not reflecting any lights. This ensures that the glossy black is true black. Having any reflections can skew your results and can make these adjustments much more difficult. Then turn the mask back on and adjust it so that it isolates the center portion of the target, or the gray scale. To adjust the mask, be sure to select it in the inspector. In the color inspector, adjust the shadows so that the values in the waveform scope rest right at zero. Adjust the midtones, and then adjust the highlights. Normally, you would push the highlights all the way to 100, but in this case, we have a problem to consider. Turn off the mask and keep an eye on the bright highlights coming in from the window. With our mask on, pushing our highlights to 100 would cause this entire area to clip, which is something we don't want to happen. When you have a situation like this, it's best to turn off the mask and push the highlights as high as they can go without causing anything to clip. Clipping the whites will cause you to lose detail in those highlights, and we want to push this as far as we can without losing those details. Once you've got that dialed in, we're going to move to the vector scope. Adjusting our mask again, we're going to move it over to the chromatic color chips. We end up with this spider web in the center of the vector scope. Each of these arms represents a different color chip on our target, and each of these color chips correspond to the color targets inside the vector scope. These squares here represent 100% saturation. And since the left-hand column of the chromatic color chips on our target represents 50% saturation, we need to adjust these arms so they are halfway to those squares. Going back to the color inspector, we're going to use the hue versus saturation and hue versus hue curves. First, place a point on the hue versus saturation curve at each of the colors corresponding to the colors on the vector scope. Yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, and red. These colors line up with the lighter vertical lines in the graph, so finding them should be pretty easy. The hue versus saturation curve allows us to target a specific color. In this case, the colors that are represented by the chromatic color chips in our target, and it allows us to adjust the saturation of each color independently of the other colors, rather than doing a global adjustment. Grabbing each of these points, 
pull them up so the point at the end of each arm sits about halfway in the vector scope. You have to use some best judgment here, because different cameras can capture different colors in slightly varying degrees of hue and saturation. So the colors you have to adjust at this point, and the degree to which you have to adjust them, can vary depending on the camera your media was shot on. With any of these arms, pushing them too far can cause them and the arms adjacent to them to start to break up or splinter. They generally need to sit at about 50%, but only push the saturation as far as is safe. Be sure to always preserve the integrity of the image. This should be paramount at all times. Once those are all done, we can move to the hue versus hue curve. These controls allow us to take these same isolated colors and make adjustments to the color itself as opposed to the saturation of those colors. We can see that some of our arms aren't quite lined up properly. The hue versus hue curve allows us to fix this. Start off by making the same points in this curve that we made in the hue versus saturation curve. You can see that by making even slight adjustments to the yellow point, we can cause wild adjustments to the yellow arm. So the changes we make in this curve are almost always going to be minor. So keep that in mind. Pull the green point down so the green arm in the vector scope is lined up properly. Continue through the point until all the arms of the vector scope spider web are aligned properly and pointing to their respective color targets. Well, that brings us to the end. We can now turn off our mask and see that our image has been properly graded, and we can now copy the color effects and paste them onto all the other shots in this scene, and then move on to all our secondary color corrections. It is a good idea to give each shot a once over and verify that each is in good order. There's nothing wrong with double checking your work. Thanks for joining us.